Um, oh my God. Restaurants have like porters and like prep cooks. This is just me, okay? This is like a mom and pop moment. Ooh, just me doing it. Ah! Trying to like make a living. Just selling things out the back of my Subaru or whatever. Hey, I'm Devon, and today I've been challenged to cook a fried chicken sandwich faster than delivery. Chrissy did it, Harold did it, Andy basically did it. Oh my God. I did not see Chris's. I've got to follow in their footsteps. I got to make everyone proud. I would love to order a fried chicken sandwich. You'll have to order through our app. Okay. So apparently, allegedly, they're telling me that it'll be 10, 15 minutes, and uh, it takes 12 minutes for my oil to get hot. So with three minutes, so I'm gonna set the timer for 30 minutes and try to beat that time. Oh, <laughs> there we go, let me try it again. Starting. Okay, so first and foremost, getting the oil to temp. So the oil we're gonna heat to 350 degrees. It's just the right temperature to make sure that you get that golden brown crust that you're looking for. Thermometer. Light her up. Say a prayer. God. Okay, so there are four keys to a good fried chicken sandwich. So you have the crispy, craggy exterior. We have a creamy and bright slaw gives it a little bit of moisture. You have the peppery and briny hot sauce. And last but not least, you have a soft squishy bun that we toast to keep it all sturdy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up my dredge for the fried chicken. Let's see, buttermilk, and then all my spices. Okay, oh, chicken. And so usually you'd want a brine chicken thigh for running for between two and 12 hours. But because we don't also have that luxury, we're just going to give the chicken a little seasoning. One egg. I can just do it directly into the pan. Woo! She's got a tail on her. Where's the front of this? Oh my God. Buttermilk's important because essentially what it does is it breaks down the proteins in the chicken. Pickle brine's really popular too, but we are using buttermilk because it's fat and also acid at the same time. Whisk. We have buttermilk in one tray, then we have the flour seasoning and breadcrumbs going in another tray. Flour helps to seal in and stick to the skin of the chicken, but then what you get from panko is just a little level of texture, just to make sure that those pieces of, of crust are bigger and you're maximizing flavor by also adding in a robust blend of spices. It's not just about salt and pepper, it's about cayenne, it's about espalette. There's ground mace, paprika, onion powder, I'm gonna put a little bit more. And I think just having like a really well-rounded mix of spices can actually take your fried chicken game up so many notches. And then we have the chili de arbol, which I need to add to the spice grinder. What does my timer say? Mix that in. Delivery is on, on the move. Perfect. Oil is heating up. It's not quite at 300 yet. We're trying to get to that 350 mark, so that's fine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna transition to our slaw. Cabbage is important to a slaw because it's got a little bit more structure and integrity than lettuce does. And I like to mix the two because I think it's pretty. Hello? Okay, do you want to like, uh, I'll be there in a second. <laughs> it's the saddest day of my life. That better not be our guy. No. Well, I mean, I, I definitely did not see this coming. I did not see Chris's. See Chris's. See Chris's. Wow, they really did that in 15 minutes. Hi. Ooh, they even gave me a little side salad. Ooh, it's a big one. But is it delicious? I'm just gonna keep pushing on. 
you want to add a really good mayo to it, I prefer using Kewpie because it's sweet and it's also creamy. You know, if this was a Friday, it would have been different. Today is a really cool and easy breezy Monday. Everyone just like had a good weekend. They cleansed on Sunday, so they're not really looking for his chicken sandwich, probably. Vinegar, you use champagne. This is white distilled. At temp, get these all dredged. Really, the cool thing about breading is not only does it provide texture, but it also absorbs flavor. It'll pull in the flavor of the hot sauce and it'll pull in the flavor of the slaw. Time check. Oh, six minutes. All right, so we're just going to drop this in. Oil currently is at 375. Temperature is crawling back down. I'm just gonna get the sauce going. Hot sauce that I made is my version of a pepper sauce. It is a traditional Jamaican hot sauce condiment, essentially, that adds a level of spice from the Scotch bonnet, which is a super popular pepper in Jamaica. I prefer to use things like allspice or pimento because it actually adds a layer of earthiness. I'm just gonna break down this Squindio pepper. So we usually would ferment the hot sauce, but I'm just gonna add some of the juice so that we have a little bit of brininess. Some brown sugar just to balance out some of the spiciness. Oops. And then we're just gonna cook it down a little bit, kind of round it out. Oh my God. The color is perfect. We're gonna just add another four minutes back because I feel like I lost it. I'm just gonna toast our bun over dry heat. Honestly, I have a sweet tooth and brioche is just a little bit sweeter than what you might find from a classic potato roll. Our hot sauce, ooh, smells so good. It smells like my grandma's house and I'm not mad. Ooh. One minute. Chicken, down. I like to have my slaw on the side. Pepper sauce. I would clean it up, but I just wanted to prove to everyone that, uh, exactly, that I'm finished well before time. I'm gonna just add another four minutes back because I feel like I lost it. So for the restaurant version, we have a similar cabbage slaw, but this one I can tell because of the translucency, maybe this wasn't made today. And then the bun, you can tell that they did actually toast it. They used a bit more oil. You can tell because of the way it's saturated in the center of the, of the bread here. And then there's some sort of like remoulade, orange, creamy moment. I mean, it's kind of like an orange ranch. Honestly, it might be ranch and French dressing together. It's really good though, I'm actually into it. This piece of meat is like giving me incredible Hulk vibes. It's like really big. So when I bite this, even though it does have a bit of texture to it, it's still a little bit softer and it's a little oily. It leaves my mouth kind of coated in oil, but delicious. Okay, let's talk about my fried chicken sandwich. Perfect brioche. The slaw is on point. I can even smell the heat. It's like got that floralness to it, which I really like. It's gonna be very spicy. Oh yeah. I don't know if you've ever been to like a Southern church before, but you have people who like pass out on the floor and they're like, they caught the spirit. Basically the sandwich is doing that to me right now. Ooh, except I'm not gonna pass out for the sake of this video. I think, I think I, not that it was a competition, but I killed it, I smashed it. It's got such a good balance of heat, not only from the condiment on top, but also from the texture of the chicken sandwich itself. It's still got its crunch and integrity. And then the bun hasn't absorbed all of the sauce yet, but it still kind of holds that flavor in place. And it's squishy. It's like a little stress ball, essentially. You just like squeeze buns all day. So, in conclusion, to have the perfect fried chicken sandwich, there's four key things you have to be mindful of. The first one is going to be the crispy, craggy texture. Controlling your temperature, it's a little detail, but it's the difference between something that's soggy and something that's not. So I can kind of tell that they were maybe frying something else and the temperature dropped and they had this in and they didn't get it back up to temperature. All fine, it's still delicious. This sandwich, 
the texture of the breading is fire. It's not getting soppy or soggy in a box. It's not pre-dressed for you. When we look at something like a slaw, it's creamy, but it's also bright as well. So the slaw is on point. It's cooling, it's refreshing, it's also acidic. So it's actually good that you break your cabbage down a little bit. You maybe don't want it to go this far because then you kind of lose the integrity and that crunchiness. Condiments are everything, right? So hot sauce that I made is my version of a pepper sauce. It is peppery and briny. Over time, it develops more and more flavor, but if you want to get around that, you can always throw in a pickled pepper it's just to kind of get those flavors and that kind of like funky moment going. And then I probably want like a creamy, I want like a creamy sauce, I think. I think I'm actually inspired by the restaurant version to actually also have like a creamy sauce in addition to the pepper sauce as well. And then the bun is, you know, got that sturdiness. It's a great bun choice. When it comes to toasting, I like to do no fat because there's already so much fat that's been in contact with the sandwich. This is a little deflated and then the bun is a little too oily. And so the takeaway I think is you can do this yourself at home. It allows you to appreciate how good a chicken sandwich should be and can be. The first time I made my first fried chicken sandwich and people were around to eat it, I was like, first of all, the talk of the town. Everyone loved me and wanted to hang out with me even more. And then if you feel like you're down on your serotonin levels, just pick up the phone. Fried Chicken Sam's will be there in 12 minutes. What's up, you need some help? I know I don't need help, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> so, which one looks better? Yeah, I'm not gonna tell you which one is mine. That's fine, I'll, t I'll tell you honestly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one? No. Yes. <laughs> and which one is yours? Obviously the one on the left. Ah! Ha, 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 ha.